jail time. Maybe that would have been more than just saying you're sorry. I'm taking this back from Justin. You're not stupid. Okay, you're not stupid. A lot of people right now are feeling stupid but don't feel that way. You didn't know. You only knew the things that you knew. And people like me had to stay silent because we had to support the survivors. But now that it's out, the truth will set you free. So, that's all I've got. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, take care of yourselves, folks. Bye. You probably noticed from the things that I've written about this that I have a huge problem, not just with Mike Michaud, but with Rob Walker and with Doug Walker because they are complicit in this. And I know a lot of people want to believe that they're not involved or that they don't know about this stuff because they make videos that they like and they are nice in the videos. And they're not monsters all the time. They were nice to me at times. But there were times when they said some really hurtful things and did some hurtful things. And they were part of decisions that affected us. There was a very specific incident when I came to Chicago to film the crossover for A Talking Cat with Doug. And while I was there, I shot his talk show, Shut Up and Talk. And when I was on that set, Mike Michaud waited until everyone else left and cornered me and aggressively asked me why I had so many mid-rolls on my videos. And he was saying that it was causing people to turn on ad block and he'd left up comments that were mean as a hint to me instead of just coming to me about it. And whatever you want to say about the mid-rolls, the way that he handled this was really just atrocious and it made me really uncomfortable. And I cried in the bathroom in the studio because I was so upset over this. And the only person around afterwards was Doug. So I came to Doug and I told him what happened. And he said that he would look into it. And the next thing that happened was he and Mashad, uh, Doug was in this call, called me up to tell me that they were limiting the mid-rolls. Uh, they were deciding what we were gonna do with our videos. And the things that Mashad did were never addressed. And in the document, you can see other things where they were involved. So it's not just this. So all of them are complicit in this. And if you read the document, you'll see that about 99% of the problems are from Mike Mashad. He's a terrible manager and he's a bully and a misogynist and he just should not be in this position of power. There was this long history of not communicating with us, uh, bullying us, patronizing us, not caring about their producers and there's lots of serious allegations in this document. Some of them are less serious than others but all of them are legitimate grievances and they center around primarily Mike Mashad, who is the CEO of the company and Doug and Rob Walker. And suddenly oh! You look like a forgotten Ninja Turtle. You look like Dr. Evil's dick. You look like a live-action Humpty Dumpty. You look like every one of your sexual encounters has ended in regret. You could quite possibly be the least likable human being on the face of the planet. And that's including me. I'm still here. Just think that Mike Ellis has a bunch of unwanted, unwarranted, continual sexual advances, and yet people still will defend him. Juario raped a chick, and people still defend him. No one has defended you. Not, not one. No one has ever said, hey, listen, you're wrong. Mike's a good... No one. It's like, it's, like, it's like planet Earth has come to a consensus opinion that you as a human just suck. If you're a fan of the Nostalgia Critic, then there's a good chance that you're familiar with his brother, Rob. He's that one guy who plays every character that's not Doug. Formerly in the shadows, uh, not with Todd. Rob has made his way front and center over the years, becoming more and more of an on-screen presence alongside his brother. But involving himself in his brother's work has proven to be, let's say, a bit challenging for both. Some would even say that there's a bit of a sibling rivalry brewing. Those that have worked with the Walkers note that they bitch and bicker like an old married couple. 
sucked. This movie sucked. It sucked. This movie fucking sucked. Everybody applauded wait, wait, at wait, the wait, end wait, cause wait, they wait. love Jungle Book and Cinderella wait, wait, and we thought that sucked. It sucked. It sucked. Emma Watson can't sing. The Beatles will type CG shit because it sucked. It sucked. It's a terrible movie. It's dumb and pointless. It is such shit. Just go and see the original classic. Knock knock. Who's there? This movie fucking sucked! It sucked! Things such as where someone needs to be standing during a shot have led to all-out shouting matches between the two walkers. Walkers. You know, that could give the wrong impression. So from now on, I will exclusively refer to them as Rob and Doug. Or alternatively, Doug 1 and Doug 2. Where was I? Oh yeah, it seems like it's not only movies that these two can't agree on, whether it be somebody else's or their own. It, well, it's just about everything, if you're willing to believe some. The accounts that have been described in Rob makes him seem like, makes him seem like the type of guy who grew up without friends himself, but hung around his younger brother so that he could boss him and his few friends around. And like he was the type of guy who grew up without friends, and took that out on his younger brother and his group of friends. The type of person who is only around, you know, because of association. We're talking about a real Angelica Pickles kind of situation. Yeah, and you know how everybody felt about her. Even the people who made that character hated that bitch. I said it. That's right. I'm not beyond making fun of fictional eight-year-old girls, all right? That's right. Everybody here is a target. And we actually have an artist re-rendering of what Doug and Rob's childhood might have looked like. Let's, let's take a look. Hey. Problems. Hey. I tell you, the people that work on this channel, all one of me, uh, you truly, do, they, they deserve a raise. A lot of people have referred to Rob as a bit of a bully. This was actually something I made sure that I clarified, and yes, apparently it's a common sentiment. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Rob is the type of guy who likes to throw his weight around. He's very commanding of those who work for him, and also very dismissive when they tell him such. After Holly's unfortunate firing for a time being, Rob took over as the interim HR person, listening and trying to take on all problems and complaints. Instead of trying to find solutions, he simply wrote off his air quote employees' complaints as nothing more than them bitching or otherwise acting like babies. Fuck it, Angelic Pickles, motherfucker. My guess is that much like the rest of Channel Awesome not knowing what Mashaw does, he didn't really know what Holly did before assuming her position. But then again, this is a guy who doesn't even know when he's talking to a producer or just somebody asking him for an interview. From what I've heard, it seems like he really thinks he's beyond the channel, but not beyond the revenue he could make from it. <laughs> the only way anyone could ever mistake you for a 10 is if you and your brother were walking down the street side by side. You look pale. Maybe you should step out of your brother's shadow long enough to try to get a tan. You look like a fatter, less talented duck. When you smile, it looks like somebody just knuckle-busted your anal cavity. You resemble an eel. Guys, if this, if this roast is laughing, you can blame it on my vacation from these restaurants. I have some serious roast rust. Also, I'm sorry, I intended on being meaner, but I don't, I don't know if it's warranted granted with everything else we know now. I mean, he's a bossy, pompous prick, but I think that really just covers it, you know? And according to people who still watch Channel Awesome, that doesn't really come off as a surprise. Black Friend Allen was the one who mentioned to me that you could pretty much see all this on display in their behind-the-scenes features. Hell, even Mr. Medicare, or uh, as I've come to know him, The Simpsons of YouTube, Even Medicare mentioned in his video series that Rob has been described as a bit of a bully. So I guess this is just a, a, another secondhand confirmation. Do I think Rob is the worst person at Channel Awesome? I don't know. Do I think he contributed to making the shitty environment even more shitty? I mean, I think that goes without saying.
One of the biggest misconceptions that I've seen about this whole thing is that we were paid employees and we weren't. We did it all for free. It was a symbiotic relationship. You know, they would give us exposure and we would give them traffic for our videos and they would get ad revenue from people who clicked on our videos on the site. I was with them between probably 2009 to 2011 or so when I was dating Linkara. I was also on the site for about six months or so and um, back in my heyday I did tabletop role-playing game reviews. So I reviewed um, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons wasn't one of them but World of Darkness and Battletech and things like that. So I was mostly though um, with Lewis's stuff. I was we were dating at the time, and so I would assist him with his videos and do his plot lines and stories and things like that. Well, as it worked, as it turned out too, I also worked on um, Suburban Nights. Sorry. So in 2010, I think they Channel Awesome put together this their yearly anniversary movie, and they invited everybody down to Chicago. Uh, but uh, Lewis at the time didn't have a vehicle and didn't drive, so they asked me, hey. Do you want to come down and kind of help out a little bit? Uh, maybe be a production assistant and you would just drive your vehicle down there and we'll put you up in a hotel with Lewis. I said, great. So that would save them some money to do that. And um, so what ended up happening is I drove down there for about eight hours or so. So not only was I driving down there, but I also ended up having my vehicle be used for the production. So I'd shuttle people around. They had a couple vans that they used and they just weren't enough. So my vehicle kind of got roped into it, and as well as props that were not being used for production, they would go into that vehicle to get stored. There was at least an illusion that they cared about the producers there. There were problems like a lot of websites have or a lot of businesses have. Um, that's just, that comes with the territory. So you expect that these things will smooth out over time. And instead, they just got worse. Um, I also ended up uh, working probably from about six in the morning. You had to be down in the lobby at 6 a.m. to sometimes eight o'clock to 10 o'clock at night. So literally the entire day and then some. And really the only time you really got to eat was sometimes in the morning, um, sometimes for lunch. Um, if they were doing dinner, which was hit or miss, honestly, then they would feed you at that point. But um, I was not the talent. That was something that was said very early in the, uh, in the production, where I think it was like the first day or second day I asked if I could get a coffee and they said, no, 